Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Likita, radiology resident from Mysore Medical College and Research Institute. I'm thankful to Indian Radiology for giving an opportunity to present my paper on role of MRI in evaluation of traumatic knee injuries among adults. Introduction, knee injuries are very common due to sports and repetitive activities. Need to be accurately evaluate the knee injuries is very crucial for the proper management and outcome. The internal derangements of the knee is evaluated with the radiography, sonography, nuclear medicine, CT, MRI, orthography, and orthoscopy. In this modern era, the MRI is a primary modality of choice to investigate all the cases of knee injury since it is a very accurate in detecting both intra and extra articular injuries. MRI is also provides an excellent soft tissue contrast and it is capable of evaluating the soft tissues and bony structures in multiple imaging planes, which provides a significant advantages over other imaging techniques. MRI has also been demonstrated as a cost-effective technique by reducing unnecessary surgical and orthoscopic interventions. The main aim and objective of my study is to evaluate the internal derangements of knee joints due to trauma using MRI and also to study the pattern of internal derangement. The methodology, the source of data, it is a descriptive study on the patient who complains of knee joint following trauma referred to the Department of Radio Diagnosis at Mysore Medical College and Research Institute, Mysore. The sample size is for 45. The inclusion criteria includes adult population over 18 to 16 years willing to undergo MRI scanning with the history of traumatic injury to the knee and consenting for the same. The exclusion criteria was patient not consenting for the same, the patient who are on the pacemakers, children below 18 years and who are degenerative arthrosis of knee joint. This were the imaging protocols we used. The sequence are the axial sagittal coronal sections of proton fat set, T2 fat set sequence and T1 fat set sequence and also the axial T2 fat set sequence, sagittal T2 fat set, coronal T2 and sagittal T1 fat set sequence. So the MR image was studied for the evaluation of also the menisci, cruciate ligament injuries, collateral ligament injuries, articular cartilages, loose bodies, meniscal cyst, bony contusions and evidence of soft tissue injuries around the knee joint. The observations, results and discussion of my study are the interpretation of data based on the age and the sex distribution the, and the ACL tear, whether the edema is present or not, whether the tear is a partial or a complete tear. I think it's similar for the PCL tear also. And medial meniscal, lateral meniscal, medial collateral and lateral ligament tear, we classify whether it's a tear is present or absent and whether it is present, we grade it as a grade 1, grade 2, grade 3 and, we, and also the location and the type of tear is important and osteochondral injuries were present or absent. So in 21 to 40, uh, 21 and 40 age groups, 21 to 40 age groups comprises the maximum number of the patients in our study. So in our study, uh, out of 90 patients, 71 patients were male. So the male were more common in number compared to the females. So in our study, partial tear of ACL, which was more common than the complete tear of ACL, which constitute a 45.6% and 13.3% respectively. The partial tear was seen in 41 patients and complete tear was seen in 12 patients. Rest of the patients has no tear. The studies done by Anirudha Basu et al. shows that among 25 patients in the studies who had injuries of the knee joint, the 50, 15 patients who had an ACL tear and the ACL tear was more common in the mentis injuries. So the partial tear being the common among them, so which was a similar to our study. The partial PCL tear was uncommon. The partial tear was found in two cases and a complete tear was found in one cases of PCL tear. So in our study, 13 patients had grade 1 meniscal tear, 42 patients had grade 2 meniscal tear and uh, 17 patients had grade 3 meniscal tear. So the grade 2 medial meniscal tear was common, which was followed by grade 3 meniscal tear. So which, there was a preponderance of medial meniscal tear over the lateral meniscal tear in our study. So the last lateral meniscal tear among 25 patients who had a lateral meniscal tear, but the oblique tear was common. So which was seen in 14 patients, uh, followed by the horizontal complex and bucket handle tears was seen in six patients. And the uh, complex tear was seen in three patients and the bucket handle tear was seen in two patients respectively. 
The cystic lesions encounter by the meniscal cyst, paramenisical cyst, and popliteal cyst. The meniscal cyst and paramenisical cyst were found to be associated with the tear of the lateral meniscus in three patients and medial meniscus in two patients. The popliteal cyst, nothing but the Baker cyst, was found in three patients. Its location, relation to the joint space, and its communication with the joint cavity were clearly demonstrated on the sagittal T2 sequence. Osseous injuries, I never study the osseous and osteochondral injuries were seen in 49 patients. Most of them are the bony contusions, including femoral and tib uh, tibial condyles, which were associated with the osseous fractures. There was a subluxation of knee joint in one patient and subluxation of patella in three patients. Other findings, apart from the tear and the uh, fractures, we have a femoral top layer dysplasia, which was found in two patients. One patient is a patella alta. Mucor degeneration of ACL was found in two patients. Exostrosis of lower end of the femur was found in one patient. The summary in our study, about 90 patients who were history of trauma referred to the Department of Radio Diagnosis at Mysore Medical College and Research Institute. The most common age group for found is 21 to 40 years. So the following pattern of knee injuries were recorded are the most common injury we found in our study was the knee cell tear, which was a partial tear is most common. The P-cell tear was uncommon. Uh, it's less common. Among the mean is medial menisc meniscal injuries, we found as a medial meniscal tear was more common than the lateral meniscus. Among them, the posterior horn tear was more common in both the menisci. So the medial collateral ligament tear, so its tear out outnumbered the lateral collateral ligament tears and it is a grade one tear of medial meniscal were more common in, in MCL tears. So most common osseous injuries were found is the bony contusions, which was include the femoral and the tibial condyles. So the results of the present studies using MRI for the detection of MR lesions include articular cartilage lesions, meniscal injuries, cruciate ligaments were correlated well with the published studies. So that this was a representative images of my study. You can make out, uh, this was, uh, you can alter signal intensity uh, noted in the, uh, alter signal intensity noted in the ACL. Uh, this was a complete tear of ACL associated with the joint effusion in the suprapatellar region and extending into the patellofemoral condyle. This was, uh, the second image is, uh, this was shows altered signal intensity in the ACL also in the PCL and uh, some amount of joint effusion also in joint effusion also in the suprapatellar communication with the patellofemoral region. It was a partial tear of uh, ACL, PCL. This is sagittal uh, T2 sequence uh, shows proton density image as uh, shows an altered signal intensity in the quadriceps muscle. This which is a quadriceps tendon sprain. In the third image, you can make out the horizontal grade two tears in the posterior horn of medial menisci and grade two tear of medial collateral ligament in the second image. So this was an horizontal tear, grade two type of tear in the posterior horn of medial menisci and the grade two tear in the medial collateral ligament. Uh, this first image shows a bony contusion in the lateral femoral condyle with a moderate joint effusion and a complete MCL tear also. In the second image, uh, there is an altered signal intensity in the ACL and the PCL. This was a tear, complete tear. And the third image shows a fracture of the femoral uh, head associated with the femoral head fracture. So conclusion, MRI is an excellent non-invasive radiation-free imaging modality, with the multiplanar capabilities and excellence of tissue delineations. It can accurately detect, localize, and characterize various internal derangements of the knee joints and helps in archiving at a correct diagnosis, thereby guiding further management of the patient. G knee joint injuries are common. It will be accurately evaluated. The knee injury is very crucial for the proper management and outcome. Otherwise, it will lead to chronic disability to the patient. The both MRI and orthoscopy have their limitations. So the shortcoming might be overcome by uh, combining both the modalities with clinically indicated. So this was the references of my study. Thank you.